What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Scale News Update. If you're not familiar with the show, this is where we talk about the news topics that happened in the scale world of RC over the last week. This week is packed with stories. So if you enjoy the news, hit the like button. Let's jump into this week's topics. Our first topic for this week is a new release coming for the Axial SCX24 or other 24 scale rigs. Proline has listed a 124 scale 1946 power wagon body on the website. There's no pictures available yet, so we're gonna see this coming out soon, but an obvious choice for the SCX24 line. It's incredibly popular in 110th scale, so why wouldn't people want it in 124th? We'll wait to see the full pictures of this, but I imagine this will be a popular body for people to do some pretty aggressive cutting on to get maximum performance out of those 124 scale trucks. Now there is two wheelbases for the Axial SCX24, the Deadbolt and Jeep version, and then the C10 version. And I'm not sure what the new SCX24 Betty is coming in so we'll have to see exactly where they aim for with this body but being that it's a power wagon body it may have the ability to you know be moved around and work with multiple wheelbases either way it'd be fun to see once this one is fully released and then another product coming soon from proline is a 1985 chevy camaro the iroc z they showed a picture of this a tease on instagram and facebook just to kind of give everybody an idea of what's coming the full images haven't been released yet, but I imagine this will be fully released in the next week or two. I'm sure the detail and the quality is going to be great though, so I'm no doubt that this will be a popular option. I'm sure there'll be a lot of people trying to relive their 20s by buying this body. And speaking of Camaro no prep drag bodies, Drive RC is releasing an F body or the catfish style Camaro. They're releasing one of those. It appears there's one picture of just the tail, but it's obvious what it is. We haven't, again, full pictures haven't been released, same situation. We'll have to wait to see how the rest of the body proportions out, how it looks, what the final product is. I'm not familiar with Drive RC or the quality of their products, but if you're interested in this body style versus the 85, here is another one to keep your eye on. And you can follow the links in the description below to all of the stories today to find more information. Next, for some of you Hobbywing owners, Hobbywing announced today an OTA programmer, which is a Bluetooth programmer that you can link to your phone. You can program a number of the Hobbywing ESCs. It'll also do some data logging, it appears, give you a bunch of information, a bunch of tuning options right there on your phone. Hobbywing has Bluetooth built into some of their ESCs, obviously not all of them. So this is going to be a good fit for those guys who are looking to pull a little bit more info out of their systems. This is probably something that's going to be popular in the no prep crowd with those people running the XR10 G2 or G3, whatever one it is. I don't believe that one has the Bluetooth built in. So that could be a good example of a use for this programmer that's coming out. Our next story is the release of a ready to run version of the Element RC Gatekeeper. It seems like the Gatekeeper RTR came out a month ago already because it was released on like Tuesday or Wednesday last week and so many new releases have happened since then. I'm just like, oh, that was that was just this week still? RTR Gatekeeper, very similar to the kit version as you would expect, except there are a number of differences. Uh, most of the hard or gray plastic that comes in the kit version has been replaced with the standard black plastic in the RTR. Uh, also, there's some removing of things like the high clearance links in the front. The shocks are a little bit different. Obviously, it comes assembled and it comes with painted panels and all those type of things. And I think there may also be a difference between the transmission gears that are included inside. Wheels and tires are included with this versus the kit where they were not. The kit version of the gatekeepers are just hitting people's hands as well. So if you wanted one but didn't know if you wanted the kit, the RTR is right on its heels. I would imagine that these will be on shelves within the next two to three weeks. And then another new release from Element today, the day I'm filming this, was the Fire Trail Runner. This is the exact same truck as the white Trail Runner was. It's just now in the fire color, which is orange or red. I'm not sure. It's fire though. Not like Axial's JL, which is orange, but that's red. I do think that this color looks much better than the all white, but it's just a color difference. So some people are gonna like one color, some people are gonna like the other. That's why they make options. If you'd like this new option, I've linked it in the description below. Go shopping. Next, we have some new releases coming from Tamiya. The first one is the re-release of the 2014 Fighting Buggy, which 
It's called the 2014 because this model was originally done in 1982 and then re-released in 2014. And now they're gonna re-release the re-released version, I believe, <laughs> to my eye. But this is such a cool looking buggy. It's got just the, that epic front suspension style, the, the details overall on this thing are just super cool. I've never owned this style to me. This one, for some reason though, I kind of feel like I want to. It's got a interesting rear suspension with a remote reservoir shock, which is done in the most interesting way. It's basically just the shock oil bottle with some fuel tubing that's zip tied on in a couple of ways. Now this was a difficult news story to do because I have to keep looking at the name. It's the Fighting Buggy 2014. There's also a Fighter Buggy that's also being re-released and it's actually called the Fighter Buggy RX Memorial, but it's completely different vehicles. There's a Fighting Buggy and a Fighter Buggy. These things must've been named in Japanese and the translations just happen to be super close because who would name these things that close? Or do they call these the exact same thing in Japan as they do here? If so, what were you thinking? I think the fighting buggy looks super cool. The fighter buggy doesn't do anything for me. I'm gonna keep my eye out for the fighting buggy, put it on my shopping list, see what the price comes in at. Might be one that I have to pick up. The next release from Tamaya is new, I think. At least it didn't say that it was re-released, but this one is a Ford Escort MK2 rally version. And this thing looks great. I have a soft spot for Ford Escort MK2s. I just like them. And I really like the Hoonigan MK2 that was done way back in like 20 teens sometime. I'm going to have to own this. It's going to have to have that matching paint job. I'm excited. Two Tamiya vehicles I want in one day. And that's not just because on last week's live takeover, Matt and I had Tony Phelan on from Tamiya to discuss projects and shop and things like that. It was a great live chat. I'll link to that live chat as well in the description below. You can go back and check that. Talked about his experience there at Tamiya, all of the you know, new releases, all of the different parts and SKUs and things like that that they have. It was a great time having Tony on. I appreciate him stopping by. He was there also because Matt and I were announcing our newest series that we're going to kick off soon. And in this new series, Matt and I both are going to be building Tamiya 114th tractor trailer combos, and we are going to be building fully functional gaming PCs inside of the trailer. It's a fun mix of two areas that I really enjoy and looking forward to it. There's gonna be a number of rules and some challenges and some fun stuff there. I'm looking forward to both building a 114th scale, to me a truck, I've never done it before. I've got stretched frame rails and a bunch of blingy stuff coming, but also looking forward to building another PC, but this one basically building my own case completely. It's gonna be fun. Looking forward to that. So check that out. It's gonna be starting in a little over a week. So check back, make sure you're subscribed, hit the bell notification, all of that. Next, we have another huge news story. This one was definitely the biggest wave of the internet last week, and that is the release of the Losi LMT, the Losi Solid Axle Monster Truck. This is definitely just a ground up relook at what solid axle 10th scale monster trucks should be, how they needed to be built. This one, on the surface level at least, looks like it's going to be able to take a real beating. It's got beefy differentials in the front and rear axle as well as the center. It's got a center differential. There is an optional center differential lock so that you can lock that out because I don't believe that that's legal for solid axle monster truck racing, but they noted that specifically in the feature list on the website. The axles have a scale style of the full size axles that are used on monster trucks, a big diamond style housing. The links have good separation. They hang down below the axle. Obviously clearance isn't the thing that they're most concerned about. So getting that link separation was nice. They went to a completely new style wheel and tire package on this vehicle. It's a short course style, meaning that it has a larger diameter 
on the inside of the wheel versus the outside. I believe that the outside is somewhere in the 2.6 range. And then on the inside, I believe it's up to somewhere around a 3.2 exact specs. You'll have to check the website, but that gives it the ability to have some larger knuckles, a lot more clearance in there. Being able to move that pivot point further inside of the tire should definitely help with durability, helping your servos stay alive longer as well. The chassis is also completely new and it's a TVP kind of. TVP normally stands for twin vertical plate. This one's actually six plates. There's three plates per side of the chassis. There's a center section and then two upper sections that uh, bolt on to that lower center section portion. So there's a lot going on there. There's six total stamped aluminum plates that make up the chassis with a lot of cross braces, battery boxes, and a plastic upper cage to create the style of the monster truck. Now that plastic upper cage also pivots out of the way for access to your battery, making things easy to actually use when you're out in the dirt. I would say out on the trail, but I guess it's in the field, whatever you wanna say. Right off the jump, they offer this three different ways two RTR versions and one roller. The two RTRs are a grave digger, obviously, and a son of a digger, which is cool. First time I've seen that in a production monster truck for RC. The other option is the roller. Now, the RTRs are $5.99 each. Decent price, they come brushless, you know, who knows about the, the durability of the servo that they put in it, but it also comes with a Spectrum radio with the smart technology as well or you can go with the roller version for $3.99. So save yourself $200. Now, this doesn't come with the body or electronics, anything like that, but you save a decent amount of money. So I would personally have a hard time deciding exactly. For me, I do like the convenience of being able to pull something out of the box. Scale side, I'm the opposite, but the basher side, I just wanna take it out and go. And I've also had good luck with Spectrum's brushless systems, so. That $5.99 for a ready to go truck out of the box, painted in a cool livery with a good looking body. $5.99 is, it's getting up in that range where it may make some of the market waver. Not sure if that's gonna be the case for a lot of you, solid axle monster truck fans, if you've built them in the past, you know that they can be expensive. It may have been hard in the past to try and build something to this level at and come in under this price tag. So is it for you? or not. The next story segues perfectly from the LMT. And that is the fact that with the release of this brand new low C monster truck, Proline released an optional or upgraded set of tires for it. The tires that come on the monster truck, I think look good, fine, what it, but now Proline, obviously owned by Horizon, was able to develop and release these optional set of tires the same day as the release of the monster truck. This seems to take full benefit of that new ownership. It's good to see it in that way at the very least. So it has been a crazy busy week. This week will be busy again. You can come hang out with us on Wednesday for live stream takeover. Matt and I will be discussing new projects, new releases, all of that. You can come chat live 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on that one. Friday night, again, another Friday night live is planned. 6 p.m. for that one. Sunday night, 3D printing Sunday. Last Sunday, we did a functioning pool table, a 110 scale pool table that you can 3D print yourself. You can find any of the things that I design on 3D Printing Sundays on my Thingiverse. It's all free to download. It's linked in the description as well. Check that out if your 3D printer's just sitting there doing nothing. But that does it for the news topics for this week. For this week's question, this one was spurred on by James Knight at Knight Customs because he posted a photo of his Jeep JL in the dishwasher and he was asking people how they clean their RC cars. Now, for those that didn't read the post and didn't see that James was putting his Jeep in there as a joke, some people thought that that might have been serious. Maybe he does that. Is it a good idea? There was some very interesting comments, but I think the more interesting ones were hearing all of the different ways that people clean their RCs or just don't. So post up your after run cleaning regiment if you have one. If I'm actually trying to get something clean and presentable, I'll spray it down with some simple green and then hit it with an air hose. Air hose fixes everything. But with that, hope you guys have an awesome rest of the week. Make sure and hit the like button before you go. Subscribe if you're not already. Hit the notification bell so you see the videos as soon as they get uploaded. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks for spending your Tuesdays here. We'll see you on the next one.